here's the PX Central dashboard. We're going to go ahead and log in. Uh, normally you can do this with sort of your LDAP integration with OIDC, but I've set up a default admin user here. Once you log in, you should see uh, the clusters that you have set up in your PX Central and, and backup namespaces uh, and clusters. You can check out what's in them individually and they'll each have a backup tab. Uh, you'll be able to uh, look around at what applications and persistent volumes and services and deployments are in the specific cluster that you're able to back up. In this case, I have a single cluster running 115.1. And inside this cluster, there's a number of different applications, um, but we're going to focus in on um, the WordPress namespace here, which is running a replica set of a front end and a MySQL database backed by Portwork Storage. So you can see here, if we get the PVCs, there are two, one shared and one uh, read write only backed by Portworks. So if we go to this blog, um, hiking for pizza, because who doesn't love hiking or pizza? There is a number of posts already here. You can see the last one is May 1st. And in our backup namespace, we can go ahead and select WordPress. And you can see all the same data that we saw in the CLI just now, including the PVCs. And we can go over to the backups tab and we can see that we do have a backup that was taken on May 1st. So we should have that last uh, post, including all the details of what's in that backup, like the PVCs, the services, the uh, persistent volume claims and deployment. So we know we have a good backup of our WordPress database from a few days ago. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is log into our administration portal for WordPress and add another post. That way uh, we know we have some data that needs to be backed up. So we're gonna add another post and it's just another pizza. So we're gonna select a new image here for this post add this image here and publish our post. So now if we go back to the blog, we can see we have one new post on May 5th. And now we're gonna need to back up the application. So we're gonna actually select the whole namespace in this case. So we can click the backup button, uh, give the backup a name, Select the backup locations, which are already set up, but basically, you know, major cloud providers. Uh, in this case, it's pointing at an S3 endpoint. And you can give it some labels, some exec rules. We'll talk about those a little bit later. I'm going to add a label here for what cluster it's running on and create my backup. So now that the backup is running, you can see that it's in progress. We can look at the details and see that the first thing it's doing is backing up the volumes. And you can you can check the status to see when it switches to success. Now that we have the backup 00005, that should have our new um, post. So we can see that our original backup from May 1st um, is still available. So let's go ahead and restore that and see if it reverts our change, which it should. So we're going to say restore to May 1st. We're going to give it a name, select the cluster, the Kubernetes cluster we want to restore to, and pick some options such as replacing existing resources because we're not restoring to a new namespace. In this case, we're restoring to the same one. So we just want to um, kind of replace the application. And Portworks will automatically do that and restart the application for you. So you can see here that the restore restore is in progress and soon you'll see everything kind of shut down this is optional right i chose to um replace the existing uh, resources in this namespace so now you can see it's replaced them all and everything's running and the restore is succeeded so now if we go back and refresh we can see here that our new post is gone and we're back to may 1st so that restoration um uh, backup and restoration workflow worked great for the same cluster. And you can see everything that was restored here. So that's great. Um, the next thing you want to take a look at is the other applications in the cluster. So if we go back to our backup uh, use case and go to the default namespace, you can see there's a hello world service and an nginx service. 
these are two different applications running in the default namespace here, just showing that they both have a front end and they both have a tag. So you can select a specific tag. We're selecting app nginx, and then we're gonna back up. So we're actually targeting just the nginx app within the default namespace for a backup. We're not gonna uh, get anything else from the default namespace. In this case, we're just grabbing nginx. So this is a good way to kind of uh, filter what you actually wanna back up uh, by the tags they're using. So again, this is also a stateless backup. Uh, with PX backup, you don't have to back up the you know, PVCs or volumes. Uh, you can do it stateless as well. So we can see Nginx is already backed up. We're gonna go ahead and restore this to a new namespace. So let's go ahead and create a Nginx restore namespace. Now, PX backup will create a new namespace for you. I'm just doing this to be deliberate um, in our example here. So. You can select the cluster, select custom restore, and let's go from the source namespace to the destination namespace of Nginx restore. And we'll go ahead and restore the Nginx deployment and service. And you can see it's already deployed those back into the cluster or restored those. And if we get the pods running in the Nginx restore namespace, we can see they're up and running and we can get the service at 32767, which is a different port than our original one. So let's go ahead and navigate to that in our browser. And we can see that Nginx is up and running as expected, just in a different namespace on a different port. So we've successfully taken in a backup from one namespace and moved it to another namespace within the same cluster. Now we're going to go to a different cluster. Here we're actually running another Kubernetes uh, environment that doesn't have any WordPress namespace already. You can see that it's actually running a, a newer version of Kubernetes, 116.1 instead of 115.1, which is our original cluster. And so this is sort of the use case where you wanna migrate applications to say a new environment where you're testing kind of a new Kubernetes environment. Um, so more of a migration, um, but you use the very similar workflow to a backup and restore. So we already have a backup, which we took of our WordPress database from today, May 5th and we can restore it. Same process, you select the backup and click restore, but choose the destination cluster of our new cluster. And what we'll do here is um, click the restore button and we'll keep an eye on the restore that's happening and also watch from the CLI aspect. So here we can see the WordPress namespace now is in our new cluster because uh, PX backup is restoring the entire namespace and everything in it. So we can see that if we get the resources, nothing's there yet. It's, it's probably pulling down the volumes currently. So we can do a watch and we should see here in a little bit of time that everything starts to come back. So once the volumes are restored from the object storage, uh, it automatically starts replacing the services, deployments, secrets, and everything else that's in there. And so here we successfully have everything up and running in the new Kubernetes cluster for 116.1. And we can go and grab a new IP from that cluster uh, and check if our application is up and running. And you can see here, it has our new post that we did earlier from today and we took a backup. So this is kind of showing a cluster migration to a, a whole new uh, place. So hopefully that was very useful. Um, I know it was quick, but it shows kind of the the, uh, the use cases when you're working with uh, various clusters, whether it's the same cluster or to new uh, Kubernetes clusters uh, with different versions. Until next time, thanks for watching.